it's time. It's time to start doing running reviews again after my SAS Special Forces training last weekend. And what better way to get back into the swing of hurting myself than run into the brand new album by Thank. It's called Thoughtless Cruelty. Let's get going. And the watch is on, the music's on, and we're off. Come on then, let's go. What a great opening. It feels like flowers trying to grow on rocks. Mr. Tickle being buried alive in the desert. The sweet heavenly notes in there and kind of contorted hellish notes that bit there oh <laughs> it makes you feel so uncomfortable and what a great opening line to an album this is a punishment <laughs> oh, i love it it seems to be a song that's aware that its own ambition can make it seem ugly it's, <laughs> it's just i don't know i'm listening to some kind of rock and roll with the filters off at the moment of death, my power comes from heaven. It feels like your first day in a cult. I remember my first day in a cult. We were all kissing and making love with flat earth and t-shirts on. The rest of Nando's looked on horrified. I know something special is going to happen here. It's just drums and vocals. Oh, it's, <laughs> there's so much in there. Okay, there's, you can, oh, there's a bit of a beautiful melody going on. But then it's, like, it's just all twisted and ugly at the same time. There's a stunning low backing vocal and now again the bass line will wander wander off and play a bit of an eastern melody <laughs> Are you sure they're from Leeds? <laughs> yes! If that first song was all contorted a mischievous body of notes in a straight jacket this one, good boy it's as direct as music can get Oh, come on! It's the musical equivalent of that famous George Orwell cracker joke about the future being a human boot stamping on your face forever. Let's see how fast we can go when this comes back in. <laughs> oh my god, my body can't take it. Good boy, ah, good boy. Punching bag is an existential episode of Stars in the Eyes with Charles Bronson fronting the band Kong. It's chaotic, it's amazing, it's hilarious. It's a perfect ratio of anger, comedy, and there's a real swing to it as well. It's really, I don't know, it's good for running to. What the hell? You've got that repetition of the line, it sounded so appealing. And the drum kit, it just, <laughs> it sounds like it's attacking itself. But beneath it, there's a really funky bass line. <laughs> that bass sound and that type of bass riff on Paris Syndrome, that takes me back. <laughs> Paris Syndrome, it sounds like it could be a summer banger in a weird way. There's the sound of the open road there. There's, I don't know, disco balls in there somewhere. It's a little bit like Kylie Minogue jamming with Pei Rubu. I don't even know if that makes sense, but that's what I'm feeling. There seems to be many lives existing in each of these songs. This one is like the letter was written, but at the same time, the letter wasn't written. This is coming from a strange place where the music sounds like it's coming down tubes directly from some kind of void, some kind of void, which is part of eternity. I don't know, but that's <laughs> an album which starts with talk about being dead. And it now feels like we just enter into this constant cycle of rebirth. And every time you're reborn, it's not satisfying. Dread kind of pulls up and parks itself in the middle of the album, like the Brexit bus, except this bus has got, there's never been a good band from London painted on the side. And it's not a lie. This is such a wacky story. Someone buying a flat and then they've been told to think of all the dread and how that can lead to good art. <laughs> yeah, my body's not in a good way. Running hurts, it hurts today. What a song, this outro, that repetition of there's never been a good band. Oh, you got some saxophones now. Phenomenal. A social contract begins and it's like a game of guess the intro. It's like the song could start at any moment and then it all comes in and boots off with the sound of cockroaches, static, devil horn riffs. Oh wow, here we go. It's a really noisy short story about well, the dangers of compromise, the dangers of compromising just to avoid conflict. And the end of the song seems to bear its teeth and bark at you, it's telling you to go back outside. Don't be such a wimp, pick a side, know your values and stick by them. Oh, 
God, too fast. Very cool. What? What a song, right? So it's dealing with the difficulties of being humble. And there's this bit where he asks, he goes quiet and he asks, what's so good about this? And then he says, cool. And the whole song just kicks in in this really vibrant, loud, entertaining way. It's like sitting in a room and your TV starts levitating. You realize everything you watch is haunted and it's haunted you. You have become, I don't know, defined by the news and entertainment you watch. I fucked. Fucked. Yeah, that line, people so nice you can't believe it. People so mean you can't believe it. There's so many references and allusions to heaven and hell on this album that they pretty much become the same place. You get the idea that no matter where you go, if you see someone do something really nice, you're amazed, you're surprised by it. If you see someone do something really bad, you're also amazed and surprised by it in equal measures. Do you know what I mean? It's like, no matter if you're evil or good, your behavior still surprises people. Like there's no meaning to being good or bad. It's just, just doing something is surprising. I don't know. No funeral is truly terrifying. There's just like scratching going on and a call and response between a children's toy. And there's been a lot of kind of childish melodies popping up in this album. I don't know, it gives you this element of unease. A lot of this album seems to be about like the damage that can be done by listening to what other people say, right? And other people judging you. And then on this last song, even after you're dead, when you have the autopsy, people will still point out and say what was wrong with you. And I think it's that constant, like they're constantly being criticized, constantly pulled apart, is the reason that there's no funeral. We never really die because yeah, we're constantly being scrutinized. That's what keeps us coming back. We can't rest. It's amazing. What an album. There's a lot of lists in here. There's things you need to do if you want to be humble, if you want to appear cool. These are things you've got to follow. And that again, it just seems to go against the desire just to live and be yourself. You constantly have to do this checklist of things. Again, that can add to the sense that you just keep on coming back. Life is about just keep on doing the same things over and over, trying to get a better score or something. Oh, that's not a bad run at all. I'm happy with that. Just under eight kilometers and 30 minutes. What a fantastic album. What a fantastic album. Like, I don't know, it was, it's a human album, but it didn't feel very human. And it had kind of childlike qualities to it, dreamlike qualities to it. Sometimes it felt like you were a bit like sedated listening to it. Other times you felt really frantic. There was no point where I just felt like a normal human being while I was listening to it, which is great. Like, that's amazing. Um, thank. What a brilliant record. Uh, I forgot what it's called now. Uh, Thoughtless Cruelty. Check it out. That's really good. Go for a run to it. Let me know how you get on. Remember, I'm a running punk. You should be running punk too. Love you. Bye.